안녕하십니까. Good afternoon, everyone. I am Chan Sik An, a lawyer, a partner uh, at the Tech and Comms team of HMP Law. It's a Korean law firm. Uh, what I'm talking about today is that I'll give you just just general overview of the um, regulatory landscape in crypto uh, space in Korea. This is not an interesting topic, but please listen to very very carefully. Okay, I'm uh, specifically. I'm talking about the uh, legal nature of a cryptocurrency under Korean law and the regulation on ICOs and also regulation on cryptocurrency exchanges followed by some tax issues and other legal issues and finally some le legislation efforts regarding cryptocurrency. First, uh, where do we stand in terms of the uh, cryptocurrency regulation in Korea? Basically, and as you, uh, it's not so surprising uh, the Korea has no formal legal term and definition yet regarding the cryptocurrency. So various terms like cryptocurrency, digital currency, virtual currency, and virtual certificate, kasang uh, 증표 in Korean, these terms are interchangeably used or sometimes very confusingly used. Uh, it seems that the Korean regulators are using virtual currency, kasang tonga, as you may know, but for the purpose of this presentation, I'll using be the cryptocurrency because I, I think it's the right term. Okay, uh, depending on the legal nature of the cryptocurrency, you may have very, very different legal issues. So if uh, you uh, view the cryptocurrency as a uh, fiat currency, or you view the cryptocurrency on a financial investment products or securities, or just a um, valuable asset, you may have a very different, different legal issues. What about the cryptocurrency may be viewed as a uh, traditional fiat currency? Definitely no, right? Because uh, most of the cryptocurrency is very limited in use uh, for daily use and highly volatile, as you may know, and then it's not daily standard for calculation yet. So the cryptocurrency is lacking the basic element as a fiat currency. What about uh, whether the cryptocurrency may be viewed as a financial investment instrument under Korean law, uh, but uh, maybe not, because under the Korean law, uh, if uh, the holder of cryptocurrency has some kind of agreement to claim the payment of money or something with value, then it could be viewed as a uh, financial investment products. But as you may know, most of the cryptocurrency is not like this. So. Uh, typically, cryptocurrency is not on uh, financial investment products. What about the securities? This is the main issue you may face when you're doing your ICOs in Korea. Unlike US, where how we test is applied, Korea has a very exhaustive list of security categories. So, in order for your cryptocurrency to be viewed as an uh, securities, your token or coin maybe one of the, these categories. The most relevant three categories of security under Korean law is debt security and equity securities and investment contract securities. First, about the debt securities, if your coin gives a coin holder some kind of right to reclaim the payment from the issuer, then it may be as a uh, debt security under Korean law. But as you may expect, most of the cryptocurrency like Bitcoin and Ethereum doesn't give a, uh, the coin holder any right to claim the payment from the issuer. So on the Korean law, most of the typically cryptocurrencies are not debt securities. Of course, this requires very fact intensive and uh, very sophisticated legal analysis of the, the given coin to find out whether uh, the coin is a security or not, right? But, uh, so we cannot generalize uh, the conclusion. But typically, uh, the cryptocurrencies are not on debt securities. What about the equity securities? This is the main issue uh, regarding the ICOs. If certain token gives a coin holder any right to dividend payment, for example, or give a token holder any voting rights or profit sharing right, then it may be regarded as a security on the Korean a security law. But if these functions are uh, maybe avoid, then uh, probably 
the coin is, can get out of the scope of application of the capital market acts of Korea. What about the investment contract securities? By investment contract securities, this is some kind of an investment in a joint venture arrangement with the third party and subject to property loss risk. So uh, typically, cryptocurrency is not like this. So uh, most of the cryptocurrencies are not investment contract security under Korean security law. So to sum up, if your token is a security token under Korean security law, then you have to basically go through the IPO process. It means that you have to file the registration statement with the um, FSC, and you have to prepare and then make available to the public the, all the uh, prospectors and other required disclosures, and then protect, protection measures for the investors. What about the utility token? If your token is a kind of payment token, then uh, it may require certain license under the Electro Electronic Financial Transaction Act of Korea but it depends on the nature of your token. What about the non-security and non-payment token? Then it's a purely utility token, and as of now, it is unregulated. So probably you can do your ICOs issuing purely utility token in Korea. So what about the uh, regulation on ICO? Basically, as I uh, pointed out, in, uh, early in my presentation, if your token is a security token, then it should comply with the IPO procedures under Korean security uh, regulation. What about the, um, the scam thing? Uh, the Fundraising Business Without Permission Act, uh, in Korean, uh, prohibit the raising funds from unspecified individuals without obtaining the required authorization. So most of the scams and Ponzi schemes and frauds may be punished by this act because it is a fundraising activity without permission. So the Korean prosecutors are pursuing many scams and frauds uh, by applying this act. So this is a uh, government position regarding the ICOs. As you may know, Back in September uh, 1, 2017, uh, the government says that they will regulate the ICOs uh, by the capital market acts, 자본시장법 in Korean. But this is a very, very similar to the position of the US SEC. So no different from uh, the US uh, position regarding ICO. But on September 29, uh, 2017, the Korean regulators went one step further to say that all the ICOs are prohibited in Korea. So uh, the government policy is basically just like China, so criminal, criminalize and prohibit the ICOs of all type, all sorts at, at this point of time. But is there any legal grounds for ICO pro, uh, prohibition by the Korean government? As a lawyer, I doubt that. If your token issued in certain ICO is a security token, then, as I pointed out, the capital market acts may apply, and so it is regulated and then probably illegal without the due procedure of IPO process. But what about the utility token? Especially in case of purely utility token, there's a no legal grounds to prohibit those ICOs issuing utility token. So, um, technically speaking, in Korea, you can do ICOs issuing utility tokens uh, within Korea. So, Probably, uh, contrary to the, to the popular uh, perception, in Korea, some ICOs are still possible. But why do most of the ICOs go to overseas? I mean, Switzerland or Singapore or Hong Kong? Because that's because of the uh, negative attitude or policy regarding ICOs by Korean regulators. Um, I mean, the Korean regulator, if they will come after you, by using or applying all other existing laws like uh, fair trade law or tax law and uh, something that, that kind of existing laws. That's why many ICOs go to the overseas to do their ICOs. Not because all the ICOs are prohibited in Korea. So uh, don't be mistaken about that one. 
So even prior to September 1 and September 9 press release by the Korean regulator, many ICOs were conducted outside of Korea because uh, most of the reason is that uh, there is some legal uncertainties. And then after the, um, the press release on September 1st and September 9th, most all the ICOs are being conducted outside of Korea, unfortunately. So there are uh, great, great exodus of capital and then great technology get out of sight of Korea. So there are very, very criticism from the industry and all the stakeholders about this policy. But still, I think that um, there's, there's a possibility to, uh, for the Korean regulator to change their position in the long run, but um, probably they won't change their position in the short run. According to our analysis of top 20 ICOs, uh, most of the ICOs were conducted in the crypto-friendly countries, uh, if, if you will. Switzerland and Singapore and Cayman Islands and Hong Kong. Uh, I think that these days, Singapore is becoming more popular venue for ICOs uh, conducted by Korean company. Most of the ICOs are utility ICOs, and uh, the ICO venue uh, ICO venue is different from the actual jurisdiction of the company who uh, pursue that ICO. So they set up the ICO entity outside of Korea, but actually that ICO is, is being conducted by the Korean company behind it. What about the, the practical and the legal issues regarding ICOs? Uh, as you know, the banks are very, very reluctant to cooperate with the ICO's uh, company in opening the bank accounts. This is the same phenomenon in Korea and other countries as well. Even in Switzerland and Singapore, the banks are very, very not cooperative with the uh, ICO issuers or uh, cryptocurrency exchanges in opening the bank accounts. And another issue is a KYC AML. There's a, uh, getting more and more strict uh, KYC AML registration uh, regulations are in place. So, on the Korean law, at this point of time, KYC AML obligation is not legal obligation imposed on cryptocurrency exchanges. But, as you may know, some lawmakers from ruling party is pursuing the amendment to the existing law to impose KYC AML obligation on cryptocurrency exchanges. Other aspect is that there are lots of lots of frauds and scams. So, uh, these days, according to the news report, reports, prosecutors are reportedly investigating lots of frauds and Ponzi schemes and multi-level marketing and the violation of the uh, Fundraising Without Permission Act right now. So they declare that they will investigate all the ICOs and exchanges for any violation of the law. Uh, Many, many clients of mine ask me about this question. I want to do my ICOs in overseas country like Switzerland and Singapore. In that case, Korean security law may be applied on my ICOs? The answer to that question is yes, it may. Because Korean uh, regulation, uh, especially mandatory regulation, may apply to activities arising outside of Korea because of so-called extraterritorial application of the mandatory law. So if your ICOs in overseas country has effect on Korean market and Korean investor, then Korean security law may apply, still apply. So even if you do undertake your ICOs in foreign countries, you are not completely safe. So you should be very aware of the compliance of the relevant law. And in downstream of the process of ICO, many, many multi-level marketing um, groups are involved, as you may know, right? Chongpan or some Seryok or, or you, whatever you may call it. According to Korean law, multi-level marketing is not legal unless you have authorization and license from the Korean regulator. So basically, MLM, multi-level marketing, 다단계 판매 or pyramid marketing is kind of illegal unless you have an authorization or you have a due license. What about the cryptocurrency exchanges? 
uh, as of now, there's no particular statutory regulation that apply to cryptocurrency exchanges. As a matter of practice, though, many cryptocurrency exchanges file the report of mail order distributor uh, license. It is Tongshin Panmeo in Korean, because they think that it's, it's something, it operates something like online shopping mall, right? But recently, KFTC, Korean Fair Trade Commission, declares that the cryptocurrency ex uh, exchange is not mail order operator, Tongshin Panmeopja. So many of the cryptocurrencies are now trying to cancel uh, this uh, mail order distributor license these days. And also uh, because uh, cryptocurrency exchanges collect and process personal data of their users, they are subject to uh, data protection law of Korea, like PIPA, Personal Information Protection Act, 개인정보보호법, or Information and Communication Network Law, 정보통신망법. And many cryptocurrency exchanges are pursuing certain certification about their security level and security system, like ISMS and PM, PIMS, some kind of injung in Korean. This is a summary I put together regarding the uh, government regulation on ICOs and cryptocurrency regulation in a chronicle order. As, you, I, as I pointed out, September 1st, they declare they will regulate the ICOs, especially security token. And September 29th, they said that all ICOs, including utility token ICOs, are prohibited in Korea. And then, December 13th, they started cryptocurrency uh, exchange regulation. And January 23rd, they, they issued some guidelines for anti-money laundering on exchanges. And January 13th, as you, many of you are, may be aware, the government uh, implemented the real name cryptocurrency account system, 거래실명제, so-called. So this is the timeline of the uh, Korean government regulation. As you may know, uh, until last, late last year, the government policy is focusing on more of an ICO. Now, uh, starting from the late last year, they focusing the con control and regulation more on the cryptocurrency exchanges rather than ICOs. So tip, uh, the main, main regulation uh, to be imposed on the cryptocurrency is that real name cryptocurrency trading system. It's an 거래실명제. According to this uh, system, the user's identification should be confirmed by the, the banks, and the cryptocurrency exchanges only use the same bank accounts as their banks, uh, as their, uh, I mean, the users of the cryptocurrency should use the same bank as their cryptocurrency exchanges use. And the banks require the cryptocurrency exchanges to be equipped with certain AML KYC requirements. So if those requirements are not made by the cryptocurrency exchanges, the banks are not allowing the opening of bank accounts for cryptocurrencies. Because of this policy, uh, only four major cryptocurrency exchanges are using virtual bank accounts for trading on cryptocurrency right now. Uh, as I told you, KFTC says that cryptocurrency is not a uh, mail order business operator anymore. And also, uh, KFTC reviewed the, all the terms and conditions of the major cryptocurrency and says some of the terms and conditions of their um, yakwan, the terms of use, are unfair and unilaterally disadvantageous to the users, and they uh, impose corrective orders of these um, unfair terms and conditions. Among that, you can see that the limitation of liability costs or disclaimer costs regarding the liability of the cryptocurrency exchange in case of the hacking or server maintenance or so server outage, they said that it's an unfair terms, terms and conditions and they have to uh, correct those terms and conditions. These days, KYC AML is a primary issue uh, relevant to the cryptocurrency exchanges. As of now, the law says cryptocurrency is not on financial institutions, so uh, technically speaking, cryptocurrency exchanges are not subject to this KM, KYC AML obligation. But some lawmakers from ruling party 
are looking for the amendment to the existing law to impose KYC and uh, requirements on the cryptocurrency exchange as well. And there's a ha lots of hacking incidents uh, to Bissum and uh, Ubit, you, you some of you may know. And there are many uh, issues regarding server suspension or so server outage. So if there's something um, damages happens to the users, uh, the users may pursue, come after the cryptocurrency exchanges, but uh, they, the terms of use have a disclaimer or limitation of liability clause. But uh, as a lawyer, I think that those disclaimer or limitation of liability clause may be found by the courts or KFTC as an unfair terms and declared as a non null and void, ineffective, uh, depending on the cases. Taxes. Uh, government is not clear on tax issues, whether to impose VAT on cryptocurrency trading or not. But uh, income tax and corporate tax may be imposed on cryptocurrency exchange uh, transaction under the current tax law. But capital gains tax uh, would require the amendment to the existing tax law to impose those tax on the cryptocurrency trading. What about the ICOs on overseas? Overseas ICOs is exempt or free from the tax implication of Korea? No, because if uh, the ICO entity is not just a paper company or conduit, then Korean tax law may apply to those ICOs as well. And then most of the countries impose capital gains tax, but not value-added tax. I think that Korean uh, national tax service would follow the global trend, and they're going to impose capital gains tax, but not value-added tax. Other issues like uh, derivatives, derivatives on, based on cryptocurrencies not allowed on the Korean security law, and the, the arbitrage trading, this is a very hard topic uh, until early this year, but market is uh, crashed down, so not very interested in this uh, uh, arbitrage tra transaction now, but technically speaking, arbitrage trading is not legal on the uh, Korean uh, foreign exchange act and uh, recently Supreme Court uh, ruled that the Bitcoin is an um, asset the valuable asset unlike the first instance court first instance court uh, doesn't acknowledge the the value as an uh, asset of Bitcoin but Supreme Court declared that Bitcoin has valuable asset these days, uh, many, many lawmakers from National Assembly pursuing the uh, amendment to the existing law or enactment of the new law to provide for ICOs and cryptocurrency exchanges. These are the lawmakers are pursuing this legislation. And also, some lawmakers are pursuing the act on promotion of blockchain technology and also Korean version of the crypto value special district law. So, we have to wait and see how things uh, are going down the road. But my observation is that in the short run, there may be a number of rounds of investigation or maybe uh, criminal prosecution of some ICOs and cryptocurrency exchanges. But in the wrong term, I think the Korean regulator would follow the global trend and then legitimization, legitimizing, uh, make illegal ICOs and cryptocurrencies. That's my observation. That's about my presentation. Thank you.